Hey, it's Camo, and welcome to the show, National Meets World, presented by Solus North Gulch Apartments. Uh, as you know, as faithful viewers to the show, I like to hold stuff up, so I'm doing it this time. This time, it's an album by Jeff Moon uh, called Bones in the Ground, and by pure coincidence, we have Jeff Moon on the sofa beside him. How's it going? It's going good. How you doing? Uh, good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, Jane, good to see you. Good to see you. And, and nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, wearing a sunny sweetie hat. <laughs> 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 um, if, if these faces look familiar, it's because you've seen them before with Jane's band. Mm -hmm. uh, but you play in each other's bands, so... We do. It's nice and convenient that way. <laughs> um, now, I saw you guys live, mm -hmm. both bands, and you're doing something a little bit different. I mean, with Jane, it's, it's the pure rockabilly, but you mm -hmm. seem to have a more country sound to you. Yeah, I like to think of, you know, the rockabilly and that stuff, that's my comfort zone. And yeah. I love that. Yeah. This is not my comfort zone. This is really me getting out of that and trying to do something that's a little scary, which is, you know, getting in front of the band and fronting it. It's not not natural for me, but it's uh it's it's been huge. It's yeah. been a really fun adventure. Uh, the the songs are are simple in structure because mm -hmm. you're using essentially the same instrumentation but with a fiddle. Mm -hmm. Um and but they're different. So mm -hmm. What's the difference between doing the more, I don't want to call it mainstream country because it's not, mm -hmm. um, it's a more rootsy mm -hmm. Americana style of country. Yeah, when I, when I set out to make the record, I, uh, the, the idea was to make kind of a roots country record, but uh, I worked with um, my friend Stu Hibbard, who's credited as Stu Arkoff on the record. That was his <laughs> stage name at the time. But... Um, he he came from a background of playing playing in a psychobilly band, yeah. and you know I came from a background of playing like you know heavy metal and all sorts of punk and things like that, and you know he really encouraged me to cultivate some of those things um, and try to bring that into it. So I don't know what you'd call it now. I've heard people call it dark Americana, but uh, there's there's some of those elements in there that you know kind of take it out of the the roots country world. And, but it. it it's neat because you mentioned about punk mm -hmm. and psychobilly and rockabilly and mm -hmm. country. They're all tied together, mm -hmm. strangely enough. Absolutely. Well, they all fall under the umbrella of rock and roll. Yeah. That's a pretty big umbrella. Yeah. And, you know, there's plenty of cross pollinization that can happen underneath that. Yeah, even metal. Some of the bands mm -hmm. that, you know, evolved are, were very simple in structure and very blues driven mm -hmm. rock bands. No, absolutely. Well, didn't Black Sabbath thought they were a blues band? Yeah. They just didn't know any better. Well, and Zeppelin, too. <laughs> exactly. Zeppelin, everybody thinks Zeppelin are really heavy. Well, some, mm -hmm. some of their stuff is, but mm -hmm. most of it's really roots-driven. Mm -hmm. um, so how is it finding that niche that you feel musically comfortable in, in the, in the musical landscape of, of Nashville? That's that's the difficult part. I've had a hard time kind of finding my audience because my audience certainly isn't on Broadway. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, I think it's more of a selective audience, and I didn't really felt like I find it, found it until I played at uh, Monday Night Storytellers at Cobra, which is kind of more of a local vibe. People that are the, the sort of underground songwriters. <laughs> the that's people that aren't getting royalty checks. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, because it, it's, I mean, it, Broadway is what it is, and, mm -hmm. and it's what brings the tourists in. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so much stuff that goes on off-Broadway. Absolutely. That is the real heart and soul of what Nashville is all about. There are different genres of music that mm -hmm. people can go in here. And now, I mean, there's this great new venue, Fat Cat Slims. Oh, yes. Uh, for rockabilly and that roots-driven stuff like you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm very excited about that, Cat Slums. It's 
That's a, we've been needing that for a long time. Yeah, we may as well plug them. Because, Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> they've only been open what? Less than a week. Officially less than a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably about a week and a half or something. Yeah. So if you're into that kind of <laughs> rockabilly roots rock and roll stuff. That's, that's it's a, great... a really cool vibe too yeah. there. It's just, it's really neat. And, and classic cars. Yeah. Always <laughs> rolling by. <laughs> Can't have rockabilly and, and roots rock and that, that stuff. Mm -hmm. So when you started doing, because you two play in each other's band, mm -hmm. was this, was that a coincidence or was it just, well, here's another way we can open shows for ourselves? <laughs> because that, that seems to work out really well. Yeah, um, I think that sort of came about because I've been, I've been playing with Jane Rose for yeah. about four or five years now. I, don't know, I can't keep track anymore. But, um, you know, when it came time to do my own project, of course, I just kind of gravitated towards the musicians that I already work with. Yeah. And it just made sense. Is it is it fun for them to do something a little different? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love upright bass. I've had mm -hmm. my bass for probably seven or eight years. And I've never really played it until playing with Jeff. Wow. It was just kind of a, I'll learn my songs and I can be my own backup bass player if there's an emergency, but never really a reason to push myself to really learn anything. And then Jeff is an amazing teacher, so it's, he's been pushing me to learn, do new things on the bass besides the one and the five. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it's fun too, because you get to oh, take yeah. a break from singing. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. Play the bass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you find, obviously you spend a lot of time together, so is does that ever get to be an issue good or bad we're family okay yeah, yeah. It's, it's family i mean yeah it's it... i don't know how josephine feels so <laughs> i only like get half as much as you guys yeah <laughs> you are a hell of a film player. <clears throat> thank you very much when i saw the show i was really amazed at... did you come to drifters yes cool yes drifters is, is a unique little spot <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the oldest bar in Nashville. Yep, I'll oh, be oh, playing there again. Oh, Springwater. Springwater. Oh, Springwater. Springwater. Oh, Springwater. Oh, Springwater. Oh, Springwater. I mean, not, sorry. No. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. Spring, <laughs> like, Springwater is where Never I saw you. Yeah, so I'll be playing yeah. in Springwater again on December 18th. Yeah, the oldest bar in Nashville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it shows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some character. There's, there's yeah. definitely some ghost haunting that. Yeah, place, yeah. For sure. I, on two occasions, the uh, the bartender has given me emergency because I looked tired. <laughs> <laughs> they take care of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's that's good in Nashville. Because mm -hmm. a lot of places, it's you're just furniture. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. It's like being an extra on a movie set. You're you're only there to be background music. Be background music. Yeah. And hide in the background so the stars can do something. Except. The audience of the stars when it's on Broadway. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to do a song? Sure. And uh, then we can come back and chat a little bit more. What are you going to do for us? Uh, I'm going to do the title track off the record. It's called Bones in the Ground. All right. Yeah. Let's go. Through. Here's Jeff Moon, title track from his album Bones in the Ground.
that's Jeff Moon and Bones in the Ground. Cool song. Um, Thank you. And, and there are a number of tracks on here. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've written all of them, except uh, one. Well, the very the very last track on there is Let It Be Me, and that's, right. that's of uh, Social Distortion, Mike Ness. Oh, cool. And then the other song that I did not write that I can't take credit for is um, Billy the Kid, because my mother wrote that. Oh, indeed. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a song that... Uh, I've been listening to since I was I was just a little kid, and to yeah. me that was the first song that really got my attention is music. So it's it's a lot of fun to play that on my record. So so was your mom? Uh, did she write a lot of songs, or, or was it just? She wrote a few. Um, it wasn't. She's more of an artist than a yeah. musician. That's that's a bit of a background kind of mm -hmm. artist and mm -hmm. songwriting. And is did that play an influence on you? when you got into music? Or did you just get into music as early as you can? Uh, no, it's definitely big. My mom and my dad both are musicians and yeah. artists, and so, you know, I always grew up with guitars around and people playing music and singing songs. That's that's just kind of been my life. Yeah. And did that help you when you were writing songs? Because that's a whole different thing than just playing stuff that somebody else had wrote. Wrote. <laughs> <laughs> somebody else wrote. I, I suppose. I mean, I, I guess every musical experience I've ever had has played some sort of factor into whatever it is I create. So. Nice. Um, what's kind of some of the most fun things that have happened to you while you've been playing? Uh, fun things that have happened to me while I've been playing. Well, I mean, just music in general. My my favorite thing to do is get on the road. Yeah, uh, that's not something I've been able to do yet with this project. But I've been on the road with Jane Rose. And you guys are busy. Oh busy. yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, getting out and seeing the world and meeting new people in different places is like that's to me that's the biggest adventure. I want to do a lot more of that. Nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you prefer the road or the studio? Road. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I love the studio too, but the road is really where it all happens. It's funny because over the years you've. You know, a lot of the artists said, I prefer the studio, you know, being out on the road is a necessity. Mm -hmm. But now it, it's, I find more and more artists I speak with are, they love, it's like you, love the road. Studio is, okay, I, it, it, that's a necessity. Mm -hmm. That's where the product begins, but it doesn't count until it's out on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are some of your favorite places to play? Uh, favorite places to play? Well, in town, Fat Cat Slim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably my favorite place to play in the world is a little bar in uh, California, way out on the coast, called the Old Western Saloon. It's a little town called Point Reyes Station. It's a very small town, but there's just something about the magic of that place. And you, know, you find little places like that all across the country yeah. that just have a certain sort of local magic that you can't find anywhere else. Do you find your music is kind of built for places like that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The little rundown dives, little taverns out in the small towns, out, 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 of, out of the way. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's almost like those places inspire the music you create, but... The music you create is built for them. It, it's almost like mm -hmm. one couldn't exist without the other. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Um, is that a conscious thing for you, or is it something that just is a natural direction of, of, of creating what you create? I think it's kind of natural. It's sort of what I'm drawn to in general. Places like that that are haunted by ghosts and you know have history and. Vibe. <laughs> you want to do another song? Sure. All right. What are we gonna do? Uh, this is actually a song about my uh, my grandfather. He um, he was a tail gunner in the U.S. Army Air Force. He flew thirty five missions over Germany. Wow. So I wrote a song about him. This is called Tail Gunner. Nice. Yeah. All right. Let's go check it out. Once again, Jeff Moon. Smell it through my mask. The noise was cruel. 
Jeffmoonmusic.com. You can connect to all the, the Spotify's and the Apple Music's and whatever else that streams it from there. Uh, I think I still have a few copies over at um, Grinies. If you want to go there and pick up a CD, you can do that. Uh, now, where around town are you going to be playing? If you can check it out. Uh, the next show is December 18th at Springwater. Yeah. Um, 
once the weather gets good again, I'll probably be playing at Drifter's Barbecue fairly regularly. Yeah, because that's an outside gig. That's an outside yeah. gig. Um, that's all that's on the calendar for now. I'll, I'll, I'll drop into Monday Night Storytellers at the Cobra from time to time. Nice. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Jeff Moon, mm -hmm. you're heading out on the road with your big, big headlining tour. We're not going to say stadiums this time because you're not a stadium guy. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, let's say it's your, your own dive bar tour. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, who supports you? Who supports me? Yeah. That's a good question. I mean, my first thought was Jane, but I'd rather support her. Um, <laughs> who supports me? Well, what I would like to see, what I think is would be really fun is to just have a myriad of, you know, renegades and rebels that are, you know, kind of yeah. like me, that are French songwriters, that, uh, the kind that you would see at Monday Night Storytellers, and it almost doesn't matter who, just, you know, the ones that are kind of forgotten about and pushed aside, and I would gladly bring a gaggle of those with me on the road, that would be really fun. My mom really likes his music, so <laughs> yeah. I think those are my <laughs> I don't know if that works, though, as, mm -hmm. as a big endorsement for Ben. Moms like it, too. So the last thing we have to do on the show is play Asked and Answered, where our viewers around the world have sent in questions. Uh -huh. So uh, you get to reach into Nana's uh, ugly cookie okay. and pull out a question. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite cheese? That is a wonderful question. Ooh. Um, <clears throat> My favorite cheese, and I haven't been able to find it here in Tennessee, but in California at Trader Joe's, they made a uh, combination brie blue cheese that I absolutely loved. And I used to turn that into a pie that I called, um, what did I call it? I called it the cheese board pie. Okay. So it was the bottom layer was that brie blue cheese, and then there's a layer of nuts and honey on top of that, and then you know a, a honey glaze crust on top of that. I'd be at the gym for two weeks working. That oh, and there's a berry layer as well. <laughs> well I gotta get the fruit in there too. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so that's from Steve Goody <laughs> in Nashville, and what I thought was a bizarre question is oddly come up with some really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Um, uh, someday we'll have a prize for you, uh, but not today. Uh, Jeff Moon, thanks for being here. Uh, and, here. and same with you, Jane, and, and I forgot your name. Josephine. Josephine. Why, why should I forget that? No. Uh, thanks for watching Nashville Meets World and my sieve-like memory. Uh, we'll be back next time with another great show for you. Don't forget to catch me every Sunday on Chris Country all across the UK at midday, following the Bobby Bones show, and 88.9 Tamworth FM every Thursday morning at about 9.30 with John Wolf and Jody Crosby in Tamworth, Australia. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, my